It is Saturday afternoon here in Bloomington, Indiana. And Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity, is coming to you from the Councilman Billingsley Aquatic Center, where we had an electric night of swimming on Friday night with the Indiana University postgrads lighting it up and just really showing some real promise for the summer championship season. I'm Jeff Cummings with Olympian Caitlin Sandino. And Caitlin, I was just so impressed with the way the IU swimmers were racing in their home pool advantage. Like Cody said last night, home pool advantage is real. Yeah, they definitely put on the show for all the fans that came out here. And, you know, we talk about this crew that we have here at Indiana. They're racing in and out every single day. Yeah. Then they're getting up on the blocks and they're racing. We're seeing IU swimmers winning. We're seeing IU swimmers getting second. You know, that back and forth battle, perfect example last night. Um, Zach Apple, and Blake, Blake Peroni, yep. and then again, Annie Laser and um, Lily, King. Lily King. It's just like hot stuff right now. Yep. They are on fire. They are on fire, really doing so well. And I hope Doc Councilman's watching down on these athletes and really smiling at the, the legacy and the tradition right. that they're carrying on because Doc Councilman really started something really spectacular here at IU back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Mm -hmm. Won nine NCAA championships, coached people like Mark Spitz, those seven gold medals at the Olympics, Gary Hall Jr., Jim Montgomery, who did that historic 100 free in right. Montreal, won 49-9. And, you know, we talked about this on yesterday's show about all the contribution he's made mm -hmm. to the sport that are still relevant today. The pace clocks, interval training, hypostic training, the elbow High catch elbow. and freestyle and, and things that, you know, we jump in the pool and we kind of take them for granted. Right. They, you know, we think they've just always just magically appeared, but right. somebody had to invent them. And, and it was that <laughs> one guy, Doc <laughs> Councilman, just a really amazing. And I got to tell you this really quick. I, I got to meet him when I was about 10 or 11 years mm -hmm. old. I came here for the um, IU swim camp. Okay. And of course, when I'm 10, 11 years old, I don't know the magnitude of right. this guy who's on deck talking to us, but um, he was a, I just remember how wise he was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he really had a sense Presence. of just knowing the sport well and yeah. how to impart it to the younger swimmers. Mm -hmm. And it was just absolutely amazing. I think that, you know, these were kind of in his twilight years as a coach, right. but he was still just so vital to the sport and really wanted to contribute and really kind of push the future generation. So I was um, always grateful. I know somewhere I have a picture of, of me with, the, with Doc <laughs> Councilman. It was, it was one of those moments I, I remember when I was older looking back and it's like, gosh, I can't believe it because I knew who Don Councilman was. And, and, you have his uh, book. I have his book, The <laughs> yeah. Science of Swimming. I read it and I understood it. Amen. really was just so impactful. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to see the IU swimmers and Ray Luz and Mike Westfall right. do so well with this program, just keeping it going and trying to build it back to those right. days with Doc Councilman. Yeah, how many seasons do you think it's taken Ray to get it to where it's at now? I think once he started, it was about five or six once, um, you know, Cody Miller won nationals in right. the 100 breast in 2014. And, and that was kind of the start of the belief that things could happen and people started to see that IU was a legitimate swim team right. again and then he brought in people like Blake Pironi and then obviously Lily King on the women's side has helped that side as well right. so it just keeps going so let's talk about those athletes we were just mentioning yeah, last, last night. night was fun it was so fun to watch <laughs> let's start with that men's hundred freestyle and there's Zach Apple and uh, he was the top qualifier or he was in lane number six going to the world championship, lane six, and then right to his right is Blake Peroni, who won nationals last summer. And they flip together, and you know, these two duke it out every day in that same pool, in the right. same lanes. And you know, it probably was just natural for them to just hammer it home. There's, there's Zach and Blake in their hands on the wall, first and second. Great swim for Zach. And his mustache. And his mustache. I think he was kind of <laughs> going for the Mark Spitz vibe. I think he should. It worked for Mark. Yeah. It worked for Mark. <laughs> it worked it's for not Mark. something we really do now, but and whatever. And then the ladies were like, okay, well, you and guys. So put, here's oh, uh, so this is the men's hundred yeah. breast. And Cody looking down the lanes, determined after that 59 70 free limbs. In. He was locked into this race right next to Michael Andrew, who's there on the right. And as Cody Miller said on our show last night, Michael likes to take it off fast. Cody took it off fast with him, but had the energy to outswim Michael. And you see him right here. Little half stroke to the finish, but he needed that and got 59-2. Top 10 in the world right now is amazing for Cody. And you can see he was pumped. Yes. After coming back, you said coming off an injury, this is probably what his confidence needed. He's so fun to talk to. He's like so vivacious. Yeah. But you know, um, I feel like we're only getting closer and closer 
to that big summer. And once yeah. you have this big summer, next summer is the really big summer. Yes, yeah, the really so big So the summer. excitement, the energy, you can kind of feel that the Olympics is not that far away, but they still have some really big meets to get to first. Yeah, they got a long journey to go. And I, I hope the coaches are kind of tempering their, their, their <laughs> enthusiasm down. We got, we got to save this energy for 2020 because it's a long road. So we got a lot of women to talk about too. Like we said, Lily King, Lily Annie and Laser, Annie. and Hunter Breaststroke. I, you know, this is the first time Lily has raced as a pro swimmer, and oh, yeah. she did not disappoint. Well, they're like, all right, guys, you put on a good show, but we're going to put on something even more spectacular. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there for the ladies. I love watching both these women compete. Um, here we are at Lily King with a phenomenal star. We've mentioned she's about one of the fastest starts in the brushstroke in the world. I always just get excited to swim, see Lily swim. She brings so much pizzazz in and out of the water, and she just always puts on a good show. They're virtually tied at that 50. Now, like we're saying, Annie, even though represents any Mission Viejo products training here at Indiana, stroke for stroke, but then she just pulls away and has a dominant finish, as you see, kind of like what she does. She, you know, Lily King, who is the king. She <laughs> is the king of breaststroke. And I'm, I'm really happy for Annie. Still dropping lifetime best almost every meet since that breakout meet where she won the short course worlds and touring breast. She has just built and built and built. I'm sure she's just, she cannot wait to just let it all loose at right. Pan Am's this summer. Definitely. And I think, you know, even um, um, Katie Miley and, Lil, or not Katie Miley, Lily King and um, and Micah Sumrall, who right. are going to be doing the Hunter Breast mm -hmm. at Worlds, they're kind of a little Coming nervous to see what rehab. Annie's got under her belt here because I think Annie's the one to really be watching in 2019. Well, she's having a breakout season when she should be. Yes. You know, this is perfect timing. Get right. that momentum, get this experience, have all these good meets, and then use that momentum going into 2020. Yeah, you don't want to have it in December 2020. <laughs> well, <this laughs> you want to have perfect. it in December 2018 <laughs> and keep building into that. You're absolutely right. It was so great to see those IU swimmers, but of course, I think everybody was really here to see Katie Ledecky. <laughs> when are we not? <laughs> when do, yeah, I, I would go across the country to mm -hmm. see Katie Ledecky swim because it's just all always fun to see her mm -hmm. just drop the hammer not just on her competitors but on the clock and just say right. you know I'm gonna I'm just gonna go under four minutes here just like <laughs> no it's nothing deal. in the foreign freestyle it's just amazing to see that you know I remember when she first broke four minutes and it was like a big deal and now she's doing now it's it the again. normal now it's the normal when you're Katie Ledecky you just drop four, drop under four minutes in the foreign freestyle and this is nothing against the other swimmers but it's just like look how much she wins by and she's the only one in frame right like literally I mean it, it, like you said yesterday it's always a race for second and third and when you're swimming against Katie it's got to be a little a little daunty but you have no wake really clean water yeah. <laughs> she's got that going for her too uh, you can never tell if she's super thrilled or not afterwards but she's got to be happy with that swim I think a <laughs> going under four minutes and I know she is not rested at all right um, not. but it just kind of goes back I don't know if you remember last year almost to the day last year right. she broke the world record in the 1500 mm -hmm. so I I don't know if if she and Greg Meehan said okay that was great but knowing that she didn't have kind of the the summer she wanted with pan packs and I know that was dealing with a lot with travel and everything but not having the kind of results she wanted in the summer I think she probably said okay that was great last year to, right. to kind of rest and break that world record, but let's not do that. Let's just keep training hard so that when I get to South Korea for Worlds, that's when I let it all loose because the competition is going to be really stiff for her in that right. 400. I mean, not just not just with the world, but in the United States. Right. I mean, what I think is so interesting about Katie is like when I was racing, um, I didn't love to practice, but I loved to race. Katie loves to practice yes. and she loves to train hard. And I mean, she's also a lot faster than me, so maybe <laughs> that was my problem. I didn't love training, but I just you hear that a lot. The summer's like, you know, I train because I love to race. Katie right. loves to train, and I just think that's so unique and so rare mm -hmm. and it's it's a good little uh, thought for the young swimmers out there it is okay so from athletes who have no problem going up and down the pool to swimmers who are just going to get their first dip into the water the sigma gamma rho sorority has been in a partnership with usa swimming for a few years now and they have done amazing things getting african-american women into the water loving the water and becoming swimmers and actually becoming teachers themselves incredible. let's learn a little bit more about that partnership my favorite part about Swim 1922 is the fact that we get to impact African American and Hispanic communities and they're the communities that are really impacted the most. And so it's been focused for us and we've actually seen the rates reduce. Since we started this partnership six years ago, the drowning percentages specifically for the African American community 
has improved by 6%. Six percentage points might not seem like a lot to other people, but mm -hmm. that represents thousands of lives being saved. Since this partnership began, we have had a 6% reduction that is directly attributable to the partnership. Uh, so where I see us going is reducing that number even more. And what I would like to see is a 50% reduction. I know that that may be ambitious, but we're ambitious women, and I think we can do it. Absolutely amazing. A 6% reduction in the drowning it rate is just so chills. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And like she was just saying, the goal is a 50% drowning rate. I know it can happen. Yeah. Joining us right now is Scenario Jones, who's the partnership liaison Yay. between Sigma Gamma Row and USA Swimming. Mm -hmm. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So we want to tell our viewers um, why you're here. In just a few minutes in this pool, there's going to be a, a swim clinic for some sorority sisters yes. getting in the water, learning how to swim for the first time. Exactly, exactly. So we're very excited. Today is our first clinics starting the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we are thankful for USA Swimming for partnering with us and TIER for being a sponsor mm -hmm. of swimsuits. But we have 30 members today mm -hmm. doing a swim clinic with three athletes. Mm -hmm. First time in the water, have a fear of swimming, wow. putting those fears aside to learn to swim um, with some pretty amazing athletes. Yes, today and we have Bethany Gallet. Um, Sam Stewart and Will, and Will Lacombe. Yeah, yeah you got awesome. some amazing people that are going to be getting in the water with them. Right. It's going to and just to, and to hear their stories of how they learned to swim. Right. I hope it inspires everybody to to want to do more. Yes, um, history has shown that as we get over that fear, take that first step of getting in the mm -hmm. water with the members, someone that's supporting you, cheering you on, mm -hmm. then they go on from this experience and then take swim lessons and then encourage other family members, their daughters their nieces and nephews to get in the water and learn to swim. It's a life skill. So it's been very rewarding, very exciting to just have this experience. Like a real ripple effect. Very much so. Keep passing it on. So I understand the goal is not just to get them to learn to swim, but mm -hmm. actually make them teachers. Right, right, right. That's so so cool. as, as we grow, it's been seven years, mm -hmm. we've seen you know, an increase of members now becoming lifeguards or swim instructors Amazing. and being able to implement um, what they've learned, their experiences with others. Mm -hmm. So it's been very rewarding to say the least. That's incredible. Do you have any kind of own personal swimming experience you can share? Have you gone through this whole program yourself? I have, I have. I didn't want to be a hypocrite, someone advocating <laughs> and didn't know how to swim. When right. I started, right. I was fearful. Mm -hmm. And our first clinic was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and then it was in 17 feet. Oh. And I didn't know how to swim at all. Um, and so from that moment on, I took swim lessons. Um, I had a good friend to kind of like coach me through the process and so now I can swim pretty well, not laps over and over, but <laughs> I know how to. That's a start. <laughs> yeah, and who was the clinician for it? Um, Maritza McClendon. Oh, love Ritz. Ritz, yes. hey. Yeah, you can't, you can't really do much better than have Maritza, who is an honorary member of the yes, sorority. Yes, cool. yes, yes, love yes. following yes, her. That is yeah, really she's amazing. amazing. Yeah. I love her to death. What type of feedback do you get from the participants? Um, it's a rewarding, you know, mm -hmm. being able to over overcome your fear, right. you know, and having that initial, oh, I can't do this, I don't want to get my hair wet, and then it's it's not that big of a deal. I don't the feedback has been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been you. so rewarding, and now it was like, oh, we don't want to get out the water. That's so you great. know, we want to find someone else. When are we doing this again? Oh, wow. So any opportunity we have to create or have this experience, it's been very fortunate and rewarding. Is there anything that, I, obviously we were looking at the piece and they said mm -hmm. the goal is to have, you know, get down to the 50% right. of the drowning rate. Yeah. Um, is there any, are there any other goals that you guys would like to see that maybe not next year, but long term mm -hmm. to, to, to have with this partnership? You know, it, like we're overzealous at times, <laughs> but one of the forefronts was having a membership team, you know, like having a swim club, having mm -hmm. more people involved, invested, being more supportive, mm -hmm. supporting athletes in various ventures. Um, those are some long term goals um, that we have, but we certainly enjoy this partnership with USA Swimming. Well, I could tell you as a master swimmer myself, it would be so exciting yeah. to see these ladies become master swimmers. Ah, I mean, that'd that's be what awesome. that's something I'm working on in master swimming actually okay. is to create diversity in master oh, swimming awesome. and to see a lot of African American women not they don't have to go to like the national championships and compete, but just, yeah. you know, understand that there is a lot more to this than just getting your face wet and just right. being able to float in the water. Exercise, yeah. get in the water, have some organized exercise groups yeah. and, and feel comfortable doing it, excited about doing it, not right. be like, I don't know if I could do that, but just know that, that there is that avenue because, right. um, you know, I, I, as you've said, it's, it's 
once they get rid of that fear, they don't want to get out. They're right. Right. Inspire, encourage, pass it on. Exactly. Inspire, encourage, pass it on. <laughs> I like that. It's amazing. Well, you can take that if you want. I will. I will. I'm yeah. going to use that. You better pass it on, too. Yeah, you know, you, I want you. you to be able to just jump in and say, look, it's this easy. Right. I just jump right in. Well, you may see me there this afternoon. That is so great. I can't wait. All right. Thank well, you so scenario, much. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for it's, having me. It thank you pleasure. so much. I'm so glad this partnership is happening. It has really changed a lot of lives, I'm sure. And right. we're looking forward to seeing many more change. All right. Thank you so much. All right. right. And so we were just talking about how important it is to get people in the water. Um, I hope a lot of these ladies come and watch the competition tonight. Oh, I wouldn't miss tonight. I it's mean, be they, a good one. And and of all the people that can watch Simone Manuel. Yes. I mean, we. I I still think about it. And I was actually watching this last night. The the um, the Hunter freestyle in, in Rio. Mm -hmm. And I know that's inspiring to me. I hope it's inspiring to them. Mm -hmm. has to be. Has to so be. let's talk about swim squads. Oh, Look yes. at that battle we got. <laughs> Camille Adams has, I think she's been leading this since she really the has. very first stop. <laughs> and that has got to be intimidating for Connor Yeager, Maya Dorado, and Elizabeth Beisel because she had a good night last night. Lily King winning the 100 breaststroke gave Camille 10 points. But the best squad last night was Maya Dorado. She got 30 points from Simone. Cody Miller winning the 100 breaststroke, Hannah Moore. The mile in the first the night. Mile. Yep. So, um, so things are really picking up for, for the swim squads. It, the, it's really bunching up there. But I think, you know, Camille's got the best chance. She's got a possible 20 points from Michael Andrew tonight. Ooh. He's doing the 50 breast and 50 a fly. Double. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be really good. But Connor's got Katie Ledecky. She's doing the 200 <laughs> free four and I am double. Right. I think we can counter in for the 200 free, get those 10 points. Uh -huh. Four and I am may be a little tricky with Ella Easton and Brooke Forty, but you know, we might have something, you know, really good lined up. I, you know, I don't I don't want to count out Simone Manuel in that 200 free, right. but, you know, Katie's the Olympic champion. Well, we keep talking about these these duels, you know, the, the yeah. teammates that practice together, then they come to these meets, and it's always fun with the showdowns that we see. What I loved about Camille when she got this um, the swim squad captain, she reached out to me. She's like, all right, how do I do this? So, you know, Jason, Lenny, and yeah. Natalie and I did it last year, and I'm like, oh, she's into this. She's yeah. into win. She's like, Give me, like, what is the strategy? What should I do? So I'm, I'm proud that she's taking off here with she's the She's really doing well, <laughs> but like I said, anything can happen. We've still, still, we still to got come. tonight mm -hmm. and tomorrow night of racing, and then we got a whole nother meet in Clovis next month. Yes. $10,000 to the squad that, that gets the most points, and that $10,000 goes to the charity of their choice. Mm -hmm. I cannot I, I cannot stress how much importance that is to, for USA Swimming to be supportive of all these charities. It's amazing. Um, it's just to get the exposure and for you viewers out there to know that um, a lot of these charities, you know, they're they're doing okay, but just to have the support of, of USA Swimming, just the word out. it just gets the word out, and that mm -hmm. really does help them. And Definitely. so thank you. To so USA Swimming and just the swim squads for, for embracing and the it. athletes mm -hmm. for really understanding how important it is. Definitely, I mean, because they could try to just say, "Oh, swim squads," <laughs> but they they really know how important that ten thousand dollars can be to charities. Definitely, definitely. Well, and then tonight, speaking of swim squads, we're gonna have Connor Yeager on the show, yes. so you're not gonna want to miss that. But we we're talking about fast night of swimming. Look at that lineup: two hundred free, and then we got a couple fifties, two hundred backstroke. 400 IM and then Ooh. 200 mixed medley relay. <laughs> I, I love watching that. <laughs> I am I am such a fan of the mixed medley relay. So you want to watch all those races, those first one, two, three, four, five races on the Olympic Challenge tonight beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then once the men's 400 IM is done, you want to go to usaswimming.org first to watch it. Caitlin and I on Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity because we're the only place you can watch that mixed medley relay and you never know what's going <laughs> to happen. You honestly never know what's going to happen. And because it's, you know, the, I think the captains just want to have some fun with it. You know, like we said, Josh Pernod swam backstroke <laughs> in Knoxville last time. You never know what's going to happen. I can't wait to see it. And, you know, we'll probably see people like Katie Lecky and Zane Grothy trying to do it. <laughs> but you, you never style. know. You never I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to love it. And, and anything can happen. And it's not for points. It's just for fun. A little bit of pride. And it's, yeah, and again, the mixed medley relay is going to be debuting at the Tokyo Olympics next year. So, you know, it, it'll be interesting for, you know, some, some of the men to have a woman come into them and vice versa. Yes. And they got to kind of practice that whole vibe. Definitely. So you never know what's going to happen. You don't want to miss that mixed medley relay. And then, as Caitlin said, we're going to have Connor Yeager here. And then after that, Michael Andrew, who might be in that mixed medley relay. We <laughs> we're going to talk to him about uh, competing in the first two stops of the FINA Championship Series. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight, guys. So don't miss it. 7.30 p.m. USAsummit.org.
thank you everybody for watching again. We want to thank Scenario Jones and Sigma Gamma Rho for all the things they're doing to help swimming get better and we really appreciate it. So for Caitlin and everybody, thank you so much for watching and we will see you tonight.